Well guys, here we are. We got the uh, Ducati 1200R, the Monster 1200R. I'm so looking forward to riding this bike. I only wish it was black. That's about it. Uh, so I got my cheat sheet here for you guys because there is quite a bit of shit going on on this bike. Oh, sorry. Quite a bit of stuff going on on this bike. It's the uh, second generation, and I'm sorry if I butcher this, Testa Stretta Desmodromic engine. And with the Desmodromic engine, uh, for those of you guys who don't know what it is, it involves the valves. It's a way of, uh, or it's Ducati way of getting rid of uh, valve float and what that is is at higher rpm uh, your camshaft is turning so quickly that the springs that open and close your valves don't have enough time to actually close the valve um, and what the uh, desmodromic system is essentially two cam lobes for each valve so there's it takes the spring right out of the equation uh, and virtually eliminates the whole valve float issue so uh, it's a 1198 and point four cc uh l twin liquid cooled two cylinder uh with three driving modes i'll get into those in just a second uh, 160 horsepower 9250 rpm and 97 foot pounds at uh, what was it 7750 <sighs> the uh three driving modes we have our urban sport and touring uh, each one of them has their own traction control abs settings uh etc etc um, but you can fine tune those uh, on your own on this lovely TFT color display, which we will show you guys here in a second. Um, ABS is standard front and rear. Uh, transmission six speed, wet, multi plate, hydraulic clutch, uh, 15 and 41 uh, drive gear ratios. Actually, they're on this side, so I'll show you guys. 15 and 41 uh, ratios from factory. Uh, of course, you can change that if you want, but. That's aftermarket. Uh, front only is inverted, fully adjustable 48 millimeter forks, 5.1 inches of travel. Uh, rear is an Olin's progressive linkage, fully adjustable monoshock with 6.2 inches of travel. You can see the Olin's shock right there. Uh, brakes is a dual 330 mil discs with Brembo four piston monoblock calibers. Uh, and again, ABS is standard front and rear. Uh, the rear is a uh, single 245 millimeter disc, two piston caliper, uh, again, ABS standard, and it is a single sided swing arm. Uh, fuel capacity, 17 and a half liters, 4.6 US gallons. Uh, weight comes in at 207 kilos, 456.3 pounds, and that is the wet weight. And front and rear, we've got a set of Pirelli Diablo Super Courses. You guys can get a look at them there. So, the bike, ridiculously sexy. Uh, here in Canada comes in a black and red, and I'm pretty sure that's the standard colors for Ducati in the area. Uh, MSRP in Canada, about 20 and a half thousand, factor in your tax, uh, your PDI freight, all that jazz. Um, there is a large number of aftermarket components you can get from Ducati, carbon fiber bits, uh, aluminum anodized components, all sorts of stuff. Check out the Ducati website and uh, you guys can see it all. So we'll get on the bike here because it looks like we're getting started. And we'll see what this nice TFT display shows. I believe it's the same display that's on the Multistratus here. Nope, it's a different display. So we'll take a look here. We'll get on the bike. It's a very comfortable seat just sitting here. I'm just dangling my feet off a little bit. It's real nice. Let's turn on the dash. Got the nice Ducati logo there. Got uh, all the little bells and whistles. We'll start the engine here, get it warmed up. You're good on this one. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm beyond good. <laughs> all right, so let's start this guy up. Oh, there's that Ducati. That L twin engine. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. Um, we have our TAC. We're in sport mode, as you can see there. Speedo, gear indicator, your trash control settings, your kilometers, your ABS settings. Uh, if you guys see the ABS light here, that will turn off once we start riding. Uh, it's a little faint, but uh, we have our turn signal left and right. We've got our high beams, oil pressure, fuel light, check engine light, and the neutral light. Um, I think this upper part here lights up as well, but uh, I'm not sure, we'll have to try that out. Uh, in terms of all the controls, we've got our flash to pass here. You can see the high beam light comes on. Uh, what is this guy here? This cycles through uh, your display here. So we got average speed, trip time, clock, air temperature, uh, humidity. Is that humidity? I don't know. 
No, that's uh, temperature. So we are in sport mode. I'm just going to take a quick second here to strap up my chest here. We'll finish going over the controls. Horn, turn signals. Looks like, uh, what do we got here? I'm not sure. Oh, it sounds nice. Turn down that visor and we'll get going. Thankfully today it's not gonna rain, so we shouldn't have any problems with, holy jeebus! That thing's got some torque to it. Now the, uh, the 1200R, from what I've been looking at, the most direct competitor you're looking at is the uh, KTM Super Duke. And uh, that comes in at 1290-ish cc's. I believe it is actually 1290 cc's. It does have slightly more horsepower at 172 versus the 160 uh, of the Ducati. And horsepower is 102 foot-pounds or 104 foot-pounds. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, versus the uh, 97 foot-pounds that the uh, 1200R has. It's a pretty bike. And uh, I will say, uh, although this is also a two-cylinder engine like the, like the uh, um, Super Duke, it's got far less vibration than the Super Duke. Um, it just works uh, so far. We'll see how the ride goes. Uh, I don't notice, really, the uh, difference in torque numbers. And the 1200R here in Canada anyways, does come in at about two thousand dollars cheaper uh than the ktm super duke at uh, i believe just under twenty two thousand canadian dollars so about fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars difference uh, again you still have to factor in your pdi freight taxes all that jazz sitting position is very comfortable uh there isn't a whole lot of room in the seat because the way it's designed you actually do sit right inside the bowl of the seat so there's not really any movement forward or back. Um, you can maybe, maybe scooch a half an inch tops. Um, especially if you're a, a larger framed person such as myself. Handlebars are good and wide. Visibility with the mirrors is uh, very, very good. Uh, I lose about, I'd say 40% of the mirrors in my elbows. Uh, I do like that these mirrors are more elongated. That means they're longer this way to the side. Uh, so you can see a lot better on these bikes. I do wish that a lot of the other manufacturers would uh, kind of go to this design instead of those uh, nice squared off uh, mirrors that you can't see crap with. Oh. So just quickly accelerating off the lights here. Uh, the bike does want to lift that front end. Doesn't take much. I'm not twisting the throttle much at all. Uh, and the torque is just coming in right away. Uh, the front end of that bike wants to lift. No question about it. But man, does this Ducati ride nice. There is a little bit of vibration. I will be honest about that. Um, but it's nowhere near the KTM Super Duke at all. Uh, this nice uh, L-twin engine. Uh, Ducati has here with the uh, desmodromic valves Sounds really good. It's got a gut load of power Like I said it wants to lift The front end as soon as you twist that throttle at a light And it's a good-looking bike don't get me wrong So we just kind of been cruising here on the freeway a bit doing about 100k an hour for a naked bike The arrow is actually quite good uh, I'm comfortable sitting up here, just hand on the leg, one-handed on the bar. I'm not getting huge amounts of wind pressure on my chest as of yet. So this little arrow on the fairing they have here works quite nice. Uh, it's not as good as the FZ10. Still, that's the best one that I've seen so far. Uh, but with a naked bike, you're going to expect wind. But uh, I'd say that this one is right up there, probably the second best one I've had so far. Uh, in terms of aero on a naked bike, does really, really well. Now I know there's a ton of aftermarket components. You can get a bigger windscreen for this if you want. 
Um, direct from Ducati as well. This is not something you can just go and buy uh, from somebody else. This is uh, du du Ducati factory direct components. Um, there's carbon fiber bits you can change out um, for the fenders, for example, splash guards. There's some aluminum anodized components. So like your reservoir here for your cylinder on the front and the rear for the brakes, uh, you can replace those with some nice uh, anodized aluminum. Um, there's a whole whack load of parts. So many that I can't even talk about all of them here on the, uh, the review. So go check out the Ducati website for a good view of all those. They've got a pretty nice configuration tool on a Ducati website where you can configure your 1200. Uh, and that's a 1200, 1200S, 1200R. You can do pretty much all of them, even all the other Ducati lines uh, with aftermarket components that you want. And uh, then you can send that information off to your local Ducati dealership uh, and have them get that bike for you ready to go. So uh, they, they make it really easy to, uh, to do these uh, bikes the way you want to do them. That's one good thing I like about Ducati is that you can customize your bikes. Be careful with that mud because uh, these super courses are not the best tires for mud. So I've been on the Ducati 1200R now here for a little bit going down the uh, freeway. We're going through some construction now so we'll do some of the slower stuff here for you guys. Uh, take a look at the modes for example. Uh, I've been in sport mode this whole time. Didn't have any, any time to, to change it out at the beginning because we got going pretty quick. Um, but if you guys want to change modes we have this little gray button that cancels your, uh, your turn signal. I really like the positioning of this. Uh, some of the other bikes I tried out it's over here on the right hand side and when your hands on the throttle it's difficult to reach that uh, that button the mode button to change it out over here it's really nice so we'll go through we'll take a look hit the gray button you'll see the display changes out and you have all your modes uh, now this will turn itself off here in just a few seconds if I don't press any buttons but uh, each mode has kind of its own settings so you see sport you got ABS 1 turn that back on uh, ABS 1 DTC is the Ducati traction control not to be confused with dynamic traction control that the BMW has. Um, DTC is set to two, engine is set to high obviously because we're in sport mode. You go into touring mode, ABS comes up a little bit more. Uh, ABS into mode two, traction control into mode four, and you get a bit of a reduced engine power. Press the button again, you go into urban, ABS mode three, DTC into mode six, and engine performance low. So now obviously we're gonna stay in sport mode because, well, that's the most fun mode. And uh, for those of you who don't remember, ABS mode one, traction control set to two. Uh, I haven't noticed it being very intrusive at all as of yet. And uh, engine is at its peak performance. All right, let's see, we got our first banking here at speeds. See how this uh, handles here with these nice super courses. Oh, lordy, very stable. There's no bad feedback at all through the bars. And no issues leading that bike over. I'm doing um, a safe speed around the corner. Definitely wasn't 140 kilometers an hour around that curve. Nope, that would be wrong, sir. Now, even at a, a nice safe speed at highway speeds, not 140. The uh, wind isn't too bad. Uh, I obviously do have a bit more wind on the bike at this speed. Uh, I mean, at the appropriate highway speed. But the uh, the wind is still pretty good. It's very manageable. Uh, I have more wind on my FZ07 at lower speeds than I do at the Ducati here at higher speeds. So very well done in terms of aero from Ducati. So we're about halfway through the ride here. Uh, we're going to be coming up to the twisty bits here shortly, and I'm really looking forward to doing those here on the uh, Ducati Monster 1200R. The uh, the bike so far, halfway, I'll give you guys a quick synopsis, uh, has been excellent. The seat is very, very comfortable. Um, it's, it's not soft, it's not hard, it's perfect. Right where you want it to be. Uh, the way they've designed the seat, it really cradles the rider. Uh, I still have enough room if I want to lean over the tank. I can do it quite easily. Uh, the tuck position, it's not quite like your sport bikes. Uh, it's not as comfortable. You can't really get your elbows tucked in uh, if you're leaning over, but uh, it works nonetheless. Uh, the hand grips are uh, wider than normal. Uh, still comfortable, still don't have any pressure 
uh, any vibration, any fatigue in my hands as of yet. Visibility with the mirrors is excellent. About 40% lose as uh, lost to my elbows. The controls here, excellent. Like I said, I can uh, easily reach all my controls with my left index and thumb, uh, including the mode select, which uh, on many other bikes in this class are on the right hand side and I have a hard time reaching it. Um, when you got your arm uh, or you got your hand around the throttle. Uh, the Ducati performance uh, around the long curves was excellent, very, very stable. Um, vibration, although it does exist, is very, very minimal from the twin, far less than that of the uh, KTM Super Duke. And although the Monster has a little bit less power than the, uh, than the Super Duke 1290, uh, I am much happier on the uh, 1200R than I was on the Super Duke for sure. Um, not just with the vibration alone, just uh, the overall uh, bike. I really love the look of the Ducati Monster 1200 as well. Um, I think it's a fantastically looking bike. Uh, that transmission shifts very, very smoothly. Uh, the only complaint I have is when you're coming up to a light, trying to find neutral is uh, a little bit sticky. Uh, but once you get used to the bike, I'm sure you'll have no problems uh, doing it. The uh, Pirelli Super Corsa tires on this bike uh, in the dry are excellent. Absolutely excellent. I had no issues um, doing the long sweepers, hitting brakes. Everything works uh, really well. Uh, we'll be going around the uh, nice curves here shortly. So we'll see how they handle in more of the twisties. Um, but I wouldn't recommend staying in sport mode with these super courses if you're driving in any conditions uh, where there's rain and uh, any bit of mud or debris on the road. They, uh, they're not really that great for those, uh, those environments. So here we go. We got the first set of twisties. We'll lean the bike over. Whoa. That doesn't like those little road snakes. Lost that rear end a little bit. Going around a curve. Accelerating out of the curve is real, real nice. Let's test those Brembos. The rear brake, full application, not locking up, so the ABS is doing nice. We'll hit the front brake only. Front brake grabs, again, ABS. You can start feeling it kick in, but it's not intrusive. All right, so while we're here at a stop, we're gonna do a quick mode uh, look through here. So we're in sport, and uh, as you change modes, you'll also change out your display. So you select your mode, you hold down the gray mode button, and it changes. So as you can see, now we've gone into touring, your tack is a lot smaller. We've got a lot of heat building up on that right leg. Uh, you can see your trash control, your ABS settings, um, and it just kind of changes out some of the display uh, functions you see. Let's go into urban mode. And we'll see how that changes. So urban mode, you're gonna get your mileage, you're gonna get your uh, engine temperature, gear indicator, not really race oriented, you've got no tack or anything like that. Uh, but since we're coming into the twisties, woohoo, that's cooking here on the side, got a lot of heat coming out of there. We will put it back into sport mode, because we are going into the twisties now. So we'll see how this bike handles around the twisties. We'll let this uh, we'll let this Ducati Scrambler get a little bit ahead. The guy's not bad at riding, so whoa, good test of the brakes here. Nothing's locking up. Well done, ABS. Oh, chugging was in third gear there. Wow, she wants to lift that front end so bad. <laughs> Second, third gear. I had to let off the throttle or that front end was coming up. My goodness. This thing's got a lot of grunt. A lot of grunt. The way it pushes out that torque too. I think it actually does a better job than the, uh, the KTM. Gotta say, I'm very impressed. I had to... <laughs> I was fighting to keep that front end down because it got real light real quick. All right, so we're coming around the left here. We'll, we'll be doing the twisties. Hopefully nobody goes down because we are going a little bit quicker on this ride, thankfully. Thankfully, we're going a little bit quicker. Really got to test out those brakes, though. These brakes, these Brembos are doing magnificent. I am very, very impressed. 
by these Brembos. Ooh, got a little bit of gravel here. Second gear in the lower RPMs. Until you get to about 3,000, it does chug a little bit. So, easily solve that. Don't stay in that RPM range. It's very immersive, this bike, for the rider. All right, let's lean it in here. And get right over. Oh, boys. That's a nice leaning bike. I know there's gravel on the outside here, so we're gonna be very careful. Stay on the inside. Wow. It is very, very stable. Oh, gravel, 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 gravel. So we just did a nice long stretch of uh, back roads here lots of bumps the suspension is a little firm um, but it's not so firm that uh, you know you feel every little bit of the road it does uh, dampen some of it um, but uh, you definitely do feel um, some more of the uh, the mid and bigger kind of bumps the small stuff it it does a pretty good job of tooting that out uh, especially the front ends the rear end I feel a little bit more bump but that could just be simply because of my weight which again I am fighting to keep that front end down. Holy jeez. All the way up to about 130, I'm fighting to keep that front end down. As some of you are saying, lift the front end. I know, I know. But I did promise the Ducati guy that I wouldn't do that, and I won't. Got to keep a nice relationship with these folks. I can keep making video reviews for you guys. And, uh, oh. This uh, 1200R has not disappointed as of yet. Woo! It is actually quite difficult to keep up with these guys coming around a corner even though I have substantially more um, oomph than some of these bikes. Uh, just because I'm literally trying to keep the front end of the bike on the ground. Uh, if I in any way was able to keep up with these guys accelerating out of the corners, uh, that front end would be coming up right away and right quick. Right quick. Alright, so we got some more twisties coming up here for you guys. I suspect it'll be the same. The Ducati will perform magnificently through these curves. Third gear. 85k an hour we'll go into this nice tight curve oh we'll shift down because guys are slowing down here come around here to lean it over oh my goodness there's about four inches from hitting my knee on the ground and i am not wearing sliders oh look at this we'll take this curve a little bit more leisurely because i know there is gravel here Whew, that's close Wow, it just, it's stable, even at a 45 degree bank. Oh man, that front end wants to lift. Even at a 45 degree bank, this bike wants to, uh, wants to freaking stay in that lean. Woo! Wowza. Stay down. Stay down. Oh man, it wants to go. Woo! <laughs> Man, is that gonna be a complaint issue or not? I guess not, because you could always put it in uh, touring in urban mode and it might resolve that issue. But definitely in sport, man, whew. Does it want to lift? Woo! First gear, right to the red. Second gear, right to the red. Holy crap, does that front end wanna move? That's just getting ridiculous. <laughs> Still a good time. Just be prepared for that. If you guys are riding the 1200R, be prepared for that. That front end wants to come up. All right, so we're gonna be making a left-hand turn here, acceleration. I can tell you the front end's gonna wanna lift. <laughs> that is not an understatement, boys and girls. All right, second gear. Rev limiter. 
rev limiter slow it down okay so when you hit the rev limiter i just kind of noticed this as well the uh, red lights here on top kind of light up when you hit the yellow you start to see the red show up and you've got three different bars here uh two on the outside and then two in the middle and then one big one in the in the uh in the bottom when that big one in the middle i should say middle not bottom when the big one in the uh middle lights up you've hit the red line and uh whew, does it want to lift? Does it want to lift? All right, so we're uh, starting the journey back to the dealership here. So I'll give you guys a quick synopsis here on the uh, Ducati 2016 Monster 1200R. Uh, this bike is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> it's comfortable. All the controls exactly where I want them to be. Easy reach, mode buttons included. Uh, very easy to get to very comfortable vibration in the uh, L twin engine it's there uh, but it's minimal it's far less than that of the KTM Super Duke um, do I wish it was gone completely yeah yeah but the only way to really get rid of that completely is to go into a, a four-cylinder or maybe even a three-cylinder with the right componentry you might be able to get rid of all that vibration uh, but then you kind of lose out on that Ducati flare the, uh, the TFT color display, very easy to read. Uh, I like that when you change modes, it changes the display out uh, to be what's more relevant for that riding mode. Uh, visibility with the mirrors is excellent. Handling, excellent on this bike. Uh, the super courses, if you're not on any kind of wet, slippery condition roads uh, with gravel, etc., the super courses will do excellent. It does not want to fight the lean. It stays where you put it. If you put it at 45 degrees, it'll stay at 45 degrees. If you've got a nice long sweeper and you're sitting at a 10 degree lean, it'll stay at 10 degrees. It won't fight you and it won't, uh, it won't push you into a deeper turn than you want to go. Uh, the handlebars, pretty wide. Um, I'd like them to be a little bit narrower, but they're still comfortable. Still very, very comfortable. Uh, seating ergonomics, excellent. This seat is probably one of the best seats I've sat on, uh, with the exception of the BMW S1000R. Um, but that was an aftermarket seat as well, so really can't say anything um, to that effect. Um, sitting here, the only things I don't like, if you're going to be riding this bike around in the city in traffic where you're going to be stopping quite a bit, uh, there is a lot of heat coming off of the heat shield here. Obviously, you've got the pipes here on the right-hand side for your exhaust, so there is quite a bit of heat coming up the side there. Uh, left hand side no issues at all uh, the cooling uh, lines here right next to my leg I don't feel any heat but definitely off the exhaust you certainly will feel it uh, transmission shifts excellently very smooth uh, neutral once you get used to the bike you can get it in there uh, but right off the bat it was a little bit difficult to uh, to find neutral um, quickly it sounds good that two into one into two exhaust Sounds really, really good. And then, of course, you have the lift on acceleration. Right up into third gear. I haven't had a chance to put it into fourth as of yet on that acceleration. Uh, but at least into third, up into that 130, 140 kilometer an hour range, it certainly does want to lift. Certainly does. I'll put in a neutral and just cruise into the lights. Fantastic. You know, there's something about the Ducatis that I've always liked, besides their, their look. Their Ducatis are just works of art. I mean, look at your Diavel there and your uh, Multistrada, right? They're just works of art, these bikes. Works of art. And don't even get me started on that Penegale behind me. That thing is just gorgeous. But uh, just the way the Ducati bikes look and the way they sound and the way they run. Yeah, sure, some of the bikes have had some issues. They like the Christmas tree. Um, you get the occasional one, but that happens. That happens. And, uh, you know, people still buy them. There's just bikes that are just absolutely magnificent in, in every way. 
no one uh, no one ever said Ducati makes ugly motorcycles I tell you <laughs> So we're on the final stretch here, coming back to the dealer. Uh, I've put the bike into urban mode for the last little bit here, just to try it out, just to see what it's all about. Uh, it's definitely more relaxed, for sure. Uh, if you're gonna be riding in wet conditions, uh, where the road conditions aren't very good in general, uh, put it into urban mode, even touring mode. Uh, it brings up your traction control and your ABS settings um, as well. Uh, and the bike is a lot more relaxed, it's tamer. Uh, if you're on dry roads doing some twisties, by all, me all means, put her into sport and gunner. Uh, just be aware that that front end <laughs> wants to lift really bad. Uh, it wants to get up on that rear tire when you're in that sport mode coming out of corners. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but otherwise, I have no issues with this bike. I have no issues recommending this bike to anybody. Uh, if you guys are looking at buying a bike in this class, uh, this 1200-ish liter bike and up class, and you're actually contemplating buying the KTM Super Duke, um, before you do, I highly suggest you go out to your Ducati dealership. Uh, you give the 1200R a try. Uh, worst case scenario, you get to try out another bike. You get to see what it feels like. You get to try out a Ducati. I mean, that alone is worth the trip. And... Uh, and you might find yourself wanting the uh, Ducati over the KTM. I know my own personal preference, I would take the uh, 1200R over the KTM 1290 in a heartbeat. Absolute heartbeat. And that's not even factoring in the fact that uh, the 1290R is also cheaper than the 1290 Super Duke. So guys, we're uh, almost back here at Argyle Motorsports for the Ducati Demo Days, second one of this season. And uh, I've been riding the 2016 Ducati Monster 1200R, uh, a bike that I'm very, very impressed by. It's definitely now in my top two picks for uh, a leader and up naked bike. Um, it's, it's basically, for my opinion, between the BMW S1000R and uh, the Ducati 1200R. Um, it's going to be a tough choice, I tell you, for me. But... Uh, for you guys, if you guys want to uh, come check it out, if you guys live in the Edmonton area, come over here, hit up Argyle Motorsports. Let them know Tac Moto sent you. Let them know you want to try out some of these Ducatis. They'll do what they can for you. And uh, if you don't live in the Edmonton area, check out your local Ducati dealership. And uh, you won't regret, you won't regret trying out these Ducatis. I have, I've yet to be on a Ducati that I regretted riding. Oh, they're just, uh, <laughs> they're just eye candy even just looking at them they're gorgeous bikes so saying that boys and girls demo rides come to an end ride safe be safe watch out for all the uh, specials on the road and uh, stay tuned for some of my other reviews hit that like subscribe button and uh, hopefully we'll see ya Tac Moto out